Welcome. Hello Chip Dippers, welcome to Retro Recipes. And today I'm joined by a very special guest. He is the developer from Team 17, it's Mr. Chris Bly. Ta-da! There's a round of applause. That's amazing. Are they outside? No, that was a round of applause. That's the dog. Oh. That's the dog. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Chris is, of course, one of the developers behind Worms and Worms 2, not to mention a few other games, X2, yeah. Pig. So why don't you give everyone at home just a real quick intro as to what you did at Team 17. All right. I was brought in at a point where the game was still really small, but it was still pretty much developed. Andy Davidson had joined with uh, Team 17. It was Martin Brown and Marcus Dyson and uh, Debbie Veswick back then that really saw the, the, what, where this thing could go and saw how big it could be. And um, uh, there was a guy called John Allardyce that started on the uh, animations, making these kind of wacky cartoon intros, which are really brand new back then. And I'd met John through um, a party at Marcus Dyson's house, which is a whole other story. And, um, and then, I, uh, and then uh, I got pulled on to, to work on doing the 3D animation. And then we did that, which was a massive success. And then we, I went on to then develop with uh, Rory McLeish, Rory Little and Mark Taylor. Rory Little is little Rory and he's little. Okay. And then big Rory is a big Rory and he's Rory McLeish, he's Scottish. Ah, gotcha. Surely little Rory has grown up by now. No, he's, he's bigger. Well, he's tall. Oh, okay. Yeah. To do Worms 2 and in intro animations, which again were, did really well. We also did artwork for different uh, add-ons, like um, we did the, the Worms United and all those right. other ones. And those are really cool. They're really, really good fun to do. Yeah. And, um, and then after that, I did other things like uh, X2, we did which we would, of course, and Pig, which was all those ones that we tried different things, um, but those ones didn't work out as we know. It's interesting you mentioned which word Pig, X2. Mm -hmm. And Allegiance as well as another. Allegiance, yeah, that was another good one. So yeah. when Chris kindly donated a lot of the Team 17 stuff to the channel here, and we went on and did charity auctions mm. with it and, and had a lot of fun, some of the stuff I found was um, a CD with the old intro for X2 for the, was it for the Sega? Saturn. Saturn Sega Saturn, yeah. yeah. Um, which never got released, that version, because I yeah. think the Saturn tanked <laughs> yeah. shortly before that. Um, and then PIG, which, so tell me, PIG was the initial. I remember uh, Mike Green, who's yeah. now in Australia, uh, who's still keeping contact with, he was one of the uh, artists on that. And then there was a bunch of other people that worked on it. And I think it had some good ideas, but I think at that time, Team 17 were so worms focused, things, other things kind of fell by. And at the same time, we was a young company. Mm. You're really figuring out a lot of how they were being and what they were doing. So there was a lot of, um, they realized that now that they were young and there's some things that they should have taken up on and some things they shouldn't have done. And some things like Allegiance actually could have been, a, a, I think, a good game and it was kind of dropped at the wrong time. Right. Um, and there's a lot of that that happened and it, it felt like there was a lot of, it was kind of scattered in the way that it was happening. But it, again, it was all just happening. Yeah. Nobody really knew uh, what the right thing to do was. So, and certain things I would say is like, no, they should have kept on with that. But yeah. you can't tell. Well, which would to me is the fascinating one. Obviously, mm -hmm. we did a special episode where we because we found some of the original cutscene data mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. your hard disk. Yes, yeah, bananas, among other things. But that's another story. Uh, Wasn't we, mine. <laughs> it's Rory McLeish's. Well, these are the images on the hard disk inside this. I don't know whose that is. Right? It's not mine. Yeah, but that's where we found them. Yeah, a big and boy said, gave me that. So maybe they were example images. It was Ro when Rory was spraying that black. That, that's probably when he put the images in there. Probably. I don't know. You heard it here. <laughs> um, but yeah, Witchwood obviously looked fascinating. It's yeah. kind of a legend of Zelda. Welcome to Witchwood. It's sad to me that out of all of them, that's the saddest that it never got completed. It was, it was a shame. There was a lot of really good uh, artists mm. uh, that were working on that. And that game was the right game just at the wrong time. Because that was the time when 3D and the 3D effects or what mm. it was, all the original 3D games came out and it didn't really matter. You know what it was if it was 3d yay and and um all these graphics cards that you could get like the remember the voodoo cards and oh, all yeah. that 3d effects yeah 3d effects, yeah, 3D effects. Yeah. It, there were and but the way that even they mapped the textures on was so bad it some games looked like oh it's 3d so it's fine and that's where it all went so yeah i think you're right i think it's could have been a really fun interesting game that wasn't at the right time yeah yeah such a shame and then, of course, the other place you worked after that was Digital Domain. Which yeah. That's why we ended up with an Amiga 4000 that had footage on it from Titanic, mm -hmm. among other things. That was great. Um, so 
We also found footage, or we found a photo of that machine on the set of True Lies. Mm -hmm. So how involved were you in the making of those movies? So I arrived after that. Okay. Um, the, after Titanic, everyone was exhausted and broken. And, um, and actually, even then, Digital Domain couldn't get hired to do anything. They actually went through a weird phase for about, apparently about eight months or something, when no one came near them because they thought they were going to be expensive. Um, but there was a burgeoning commercials division where um, the people in the features division took time to implement and make things, yeah. and, and the commercials division had to move faster. Right. So um, I was brought across to become part of what was called the NT division, the rogue NT division. And we were using, um, amongst other things, Lightwave was like the popular one then. So I naturally gravitated towards doing commercials and kind of came up through the ranks and started directing things. And they became, well, started as a digital artist and then CG supervisor and then VFX supervisor, then I was directing stuff. And then and then from that, I kind of hit a glass ceiling because of the way that, that digital domain were. Uh, digital domain, everyone re realized, yeah, that was, uh, a, they were, there were golden years then. Yeah, yeah it was nice. amazing. And there was the mentality of people always helped other, other people out. Yeah. And on top of that, you were, you were breaking new ground all the time. We were trying new things all the time. We didn't know. We didn't know we were trying new things. We were just, how do we do this? That's great. Yeah. And you said you keep in touch with everyone. So yeah. has, has James Cameron seen our video? Uh, yeah, he's got some comments. No, I don't know. <laughs> I'm worried. Actually, no, I mean, Jim was really um, on, on the outskirts Jim. of things, yeah. of things when, when I started going there. Okay. You, you, yeah. you didn't really see that much. Well, we have some questions from patrons coming oh, up in a minute. We All gave right. them the opportunity to do put Q&A stuff to you. Cool. You can A their cues. Mm -hmm. uh, I will A them. They're, that sounded bad. <laughs> Careful. Yeah. Uh, but firstly, I had a quick question as well. As part of the haul, we also got your diary, mm. which <laughs> was pretty fascinating. Yeah. Um, and you can see here, as we flick through it, that um, it mentions you know your day-to-day -day mm -hmm. life of a Worms yeah. developer. Mm -hmm. uh, I have two questions. Tell me. First one, which a lot of people noticed when I showed that footage mm. to begin with. Um, do people notice the name Charmaine Sinclair? At yeah. The top of one of the pages. Yeah. And she was a page three model or a... No, what it was, I knew her from yeah. when we... Well, I didn't know her. I met her at ECTS, which is the European Trade Computer Show. Okay. And um, she was one of the people demoing for something and right. standing that There was her, there was met another girl at the same time. And uh, uh, yeah, she was very all curvy and... Uh, I remember all that. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know anything about what happened to her afterwards. Yeah. Us boys tend to remember that kind of stuff. Mm. I don't know why. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> well, so aside from that and trade shows, mm -hmm. what was basically, in a nutshell, a typical day at Team 17? So you'd roll up in your car. Yeah. Get in the office. I'd get in my Lamborghini. <laughs> <laughs> and so we'd go into the office. I, we always had projects to work on. Mm. A lot of the times, when I was working on, say, um, let's just take X2. X2 was a, a Rowan from Project X. Right. And um, the, any project that we were doing had the same parts to them. Um, so if we were working on, say, a project that was a visual, that was like an intro sequence, yeah. you'd have people, you'd have to model it. You'd have to storyboard it first and model it. And you'd really just break down all the different tasks. Like, this, this car has to be built. This city has to be built. These things have to be built. And then you'd look at the artist and say, okay, Okay, you do this, you do this, I'll do this, and we do this. Okay, right. and then that would just happen for a while, and you'd review them as you're going along. And you'd have to, obviously, there's other things that would happen. Something would say, we need an artist for to do something on one of the other things, and we'd have to siphon them off, and they'd go off and do something. Mm -hmm. So during the day, a lot of it was, we're just working on things that had already been pre-assigned. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the times, what we loved doing was when we were coming up with ideas for things, which then gave us other ideas for other things. So right. there was different development parts. There was development of like coming up with ideas, narrowing them down, coming up with other ideas, should we incorporate them? And then we got down to the grunt work of modeling. Dun, dun, dun. And then after the modeling was done, then it might be, sort layer or scene layer and animation and then we'd have to grow on to animation and yeah, everyone would have given different tasks to that too and then then we'd have to then they'd maybe that would all finish and then they'd go off and do other things and then i'd have to take all that and then edit it all together and do the sound effects and yeah music and things like that so to us growing up with those games you know it, it felt like it must have been really exciting mm. like I, I my dream would have been to visit someone like team 17's office mm -hmm. or psychosis and just see all these guys at yeah. work was there a sense of that excitement internally? Did, were you aware of that? Yes and no. I, I felt incredibly lucky working at a games company and it was really exciting, but we didn't know, we didn't know like Worms was going to be that. I mean, I knew kind of when, when 
there was a time when I was up visiting, uh, it was at Christmas time when I was up um, at my uh, girlfriend's mum and dad's place, and I heard somebody playing worms mm. with snowballs. Grenade! Yeah. Like this, I'll get you! And I heard them doing that, I'm like, oh my god, kids are playing worms in the yeah. snow. And I realised, this is actually really big. When you're inside a company, you don't really, you can't see the wood for the trees. And yeah. sometimes, I felt like I knew more about Team 17 before I got there. And then when you're inside, you're in it. You don't hear the so noise. It's sort of like an incubator and you yeah. just can't see outside. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, but, but it was, we knew it was exciting, but we didn't, we didn't know how, um, again, special it was. Being at that time at Team 17 was mm. super, super special. It was at a time when it was a lot smaller. And, and, and again, I think, you know, I keep in contact with a lot of these people still. So when you finished Worms, and obviously that had that success, mm -hmm. you started working on Worms too. Mm -hmm. Was there more of a kind of, would you would you roll up into work and everyone would just kind of have a more knowing look? Like, well, like we we're knew working that on something special. It's, it's, when the, it's when Carl got the game working mm. and they were using a system called Animo, which it was a spline rendering thing, okay, yeah. which gave them a lot more fluid looks. When we started, we didn't really feel, know how Worms 2 was going to be until we started seeing their new designs. Mm. That's when we were like, oh my God, this is going to be really good fun. It became something more. Yeah. And I think that's when we went, oh, this is good. So you, we knew going forward, and then as the game is coming together, mm. it's all craziness, and it's like you don't get an, a real moment to enjoy it. You had to stop every so often and look above and go, this is amazing, we're putting together something really special. Yeah. And so Worms 2, I, when we started getting the, the, the cutscenes put together, we had so much fun putting together, and we know that like this is funny. This is funny, it's just funny comedy stuff. Yeah. And you know people would have different suggestions, and that was something that was really good as well, is that um, like during X2 when I was doing that, I was doing this shot and then uh, John Allardyce came up and said, oh, you should do this shot and then that shot. I'm like, oh my God, it's so obvious. Yes, yes, let's do that. And it wasn't like, no, it's mine. I will keep it right here and you can't have it. It wasn't like that at all. It There's was a lot of teamwork. Absolutely. And that's where really the team of Team 17 team, team, came around. Team. It wasn't this, no, I don't know. You know, it was none of that. It was like, it was always, it felt, it felt very much like that. Now, it wasn't saying it was even Stevens all the time. There was some right. times it was like, no, but there's was people having disagreements about things all the time. Yeah, very cool. Well, I was at very Zoom. Cool. That's a lot of Zoom going on there. I think we were demonstrating um, what the Holder Modify mode. Is that what it was? Ham mode, yeah. Um, Had yeah. those kind of color fringes. I remember all that. Yeah. yeah. Good times. And look, look it's... PCB Way! <laughs> of course, our very kind sponsor. Um, and we've always got to thank them for helping make these videos mm -hmm. possible. They make fantastic PCBs. They even helped Paul Resendez make that A4000 PCB. Yes, I saw that. Mm -hmm. It's going to possibly replace the one in that very sad looking Titanic yeah. Amiga 4000. I still think we broke it when we switched it on. I think it would have worked. Uh, but then we, I, didn't clip the, I didn't clip the battery in that one. That was the problem. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's all right. I'm well, thinking about that battery now. I could have. We also blew the power supply. Yeah. When I did pose these questions to patrons, I mm. did say nobody mentioned the power supply. Let's not talk about that, yeah, please. Yeah, we won't talk about that. So our first question is from David Cherryman. Mm. And he says, have you blown up anything recently? No. Sorry, we, we said we would we not talk about that. that. Recently. Define recently. Since the okay. last time you were here. Okay, I have been known. I am, I am a little older now. And I've calmed down somewhat. Mm. But I, it, I was known to have a bit of a temper when I was a bit fierier. Okay. Yeah. And so it has followed me. I've tried to evade it. And my history has caught up with me um, that I used to break keyboards. So we have, of course, the Amiga 4000 that had the broken zero key on the yep. number pad. Mm -hmm. and there's a story behind that. I think there was. I think that was in Lightwave layout. I think it was that. It might not have been that one. But that could have been a light wave. And you uh, were just you get frustrated with like, whatever God. you were doing yeah. and smack the keyboard? Yeah. It, people would say it was like that game Boggle with that you have to do the thing and then the key. So I'd hit key. So what happened was I, I went through so many keyboards mm -hmm. at work that Martin Brown got me an industrial keyboard that you can't break. Interesting. And I think I either took it with me or they sent it to me in LA. And then, um, but they didn't send it fast enough and I'd gone through quite a few keyboards and everyone knew it was like when I used to go mad. Oh God, I used to have such a bad temper, it was really bad. So I, uh, and I would, I would, God damn it, bang. And, and I didn't realize, but this one wouldn't break, it was fantastic. A few of the keyboards would, the IT department started hanging them up and I had a little corridor to my office, my cube, and it was like a wall of keyboards with half the keys hanging off, like this. And then, like a uh, graveyard. 
It was. It was totally like a graveyard. Yeah. I and mean, then we had them hang it. It was very, it was very cool. But I realised, yeah, I've got to change this. But what's weird is this, that uh, on even on um, you know, you think that my keyboard breaking times like I know I'd go to the state and I'd be a new person. Nobody would know about that. And it just followed me. You know, it's, and now it's, it's on YouTube. Yeah. Apologies. Yeah. Yeah, I went through a few keyboards. All right. But now, now I don't. I've not gone through a keyboard for days. And these ones look lovely, actually. I mean, yeah. No. So I don't, I don't, uh, now I don't break yeah, things. Just... And also, no, I don't. I just, I okay. just uh... Well, one thing that I made sure of when I sent that Amiga 4000, the Team 17 one, mm. to the National Video Game Museum back in England. Mm. Um, is I said to them, do not repair the zero key, because I think that's a little bit of yeah. the story. Mm. It's a little bit of history. Yeah, I think it was probably a lightweight related mm. thing. Well, David does have a, another question. All right. He says, if there was one thing that you wished you could have changed or added to the Worms games, what would it have been? Well, I was on the art side. You know, the developer, I mean, you say my development, that's great, because it, it um, but I'm more, I was on the art side. I was more on the, we'd all contribute ideas. The soul of the game came from Andy Davidson. So he was coming up with so much amazing stuff that they, I felt they left out a lot of things. They, they couldn't cram it all in. Yeah. And so he was getting a lot of ideas. In terms of the, the only thing I would probably change, I would say wouldn't be in the game, it would be getting into the game. And I think that was the problem for a lot of people. And back then, when games were released, that was it. There was no over-the-air updates. There was no yeah. internet you You're know, stuck updates. with whatever you yeah. put out there. Yeah. The, gold, the gold master. And people always forget what gold masters were. CDs back then were gold-colored. That's what it was. They were literally, literally a gold. gold. There were gold yeah. ones. Yeah. Wow. So you're not a programmer. In, no, I used to program sense. when I was younger. Yeah. And um, I've done a whole bunch of programming when I was younger. And uh, and I still like programming. I just don't do it. Yeah. Because as we all know, PCB stands for Programmer Chris Blythe. That's correct. Correct. I'm amazing. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> Another question from mm -hmm. Puppy Fractic. Oh. Um, she says, human talk, human talk goldfish bowl orifice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think she's referring to something about you having what was called the goldfish bowl office. Oh, yeah. At Team 17. Yeah. And, and you, you weren't happy there or something? Yeah. I let it be known that I didn't like that office. The way my office was is that I moved out of my, I couldn't, I, it, I get easily distracted, so I need to have quiet. So a lot of the times in my professional career, I've ended up working at night because during the day I'm dealing with everyone else's problems and then I get to work on my stuff. Yeah. But in that particular fishbowl, that uh, office, I should say, <laughs> um, my the stairs to Team 17 were here. All the rest of the office was there and my office was above the stairs. So as you go down the office, you'd see directly into my room and my back was facing and I didn't like that. That's not very feng shui. It totally isn't. No. And so um, occasionally I may have had a wardrobe, wa a wardrobe malfunction when people were going down the stairs uh, with just showing my the cheeks of persuasion. And and then I got moved into an, another office, actually a smaller office, but uh, way further from that. And yeah. you, so this yeah. is how you got things done at Team 17? It's actually worked throughout my professional career completely. Yeah. Whenever there's a problem, I just show my bum and then things are work in my favor. Is that how you got Charmaine Sinclair's phone number? Uh, she showed me her bum. Okay. I like her Actually, last name, I that's don't... all I know. What's her name? Sinclair. Oh, did she have anything to do with her? Well, that was her we'll dad. Have to ask her. No, yeah, I don't know. Coming up next she's week, a, isn't Charmaine she, she was, uh, She's American. Oh, I don't know any Americans. I think she is. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. When I joined Digital Domain, and uh, there was a Halloween party, mm. and um, and I, I wanted to wear a kilt, so I wore a kilt. See where this is going. Right, and I thought, well, I should wear underwear because I don't know if people are cool with people not wearing underwear because you're not supposed to wear underwear in a kilt. So I got tartan underwear, which I actually lost. This is a the <laughs> story for a while. I lost the them. Party. Somebody else got my underwear. It's a long story, anyway. But anyway, during the party, yeah. um, I, I, it's a bit vague. But I remember flashing Jim Cameron and Scott Ross and and um, uh, and one of the other high ups there, 
And somebody called me the next day and said, dude, there was somebody that flashed Jim Cameron. It's like, yeah. He was like, where did I kill? It's like, yeah, it was me. Like, holy crap. Uh, but I never got my uh, underwear back. I've actually, I've always wondered where it went. Oh, actually, I know where it went. I wondered why I can't get my underwear back. Yeah. Uh, an urban legend there from, from Hollywood. If my underwear is out there, I'm still here for you. You can come back anytime. Yeah. Comment below. Yeah. All right. So question from Tim Felgentreff. Felgentreff? It's a good name, isn't it? Isn't that kind of a, that sounds like some machine. It's the, use the Felgentreff. You know? The Felgentreff 2000. Oh, wow. That's a good one. Yeah. You know, the previous Felgentreffs, they were, they had some problems, but the 2000 version, man, that, you just added a little bit of, and it was clean as a whistle. Fantastic. First, first one was a bit Felgentreffy. Well, yeah. A bit obvious. Yeah. Yeah. But then, uh, anyway. Anyway. So he says, Worms came comparatively late in the Amiga's lifetime. Yes. And was available on other platforms too. Was there something special about the Amiga, its fans, or even the sales figures that you can remember? Also, why wasn't Worms 2 on the Amiga? That was at the end of the Amiga's life. Sadly, it wasn't financially viable. Mm. And then when, when Director's Cut was coming out, Andy was really disappointed because, you know, getting that game out was like, it wasn't going to make money. The cost of manufacturing it back then, because it was a physical product, was more than the money they're going to get back. The people that were diehard Amiga, die -hard Amiga people loved the game, but they weren't enough sufficient numbers. So was there something special about the Amiga back then that you, you remember, or were all platforms treated equally within Team 17? No, uh, I think, well, what would happen is for the, like, the Game Boy version and the Thing version, the, we actually had people come in, and then sometimes there was, there was like work that was outsourced. Um, a lot of that, if I remember correctly, they had problems with, so then we brought them in to do the finishing touches. Mm. So, so some of those um, were extra people that were brought in. The main people coding it uh, uh, were, were in-house mm. uh, people. And the Amiga version was kind of like, it was kind of bittersweet because I think we all knew it was like this is going to be the last one. Yeah. You know, one of the last games that was going to be on, on the on the Amiga platform. Um, Very bittersweet. You know, which was, yeah. But you know, it's it's interesting because even back then when they re, when they came out with Director's Cut, it was like the best version of Worms as well. It had so it fixed a lot of the things and he fixed it. He worked really hard on it, and um, he worked into a place where that was the probably the best one. Yeah. The Director's Cut and the Amiga one. The other ones had actually, some of them had AI problems and some weird aiming problems that were like, they, were, they would hit too easily, you know, they would get too good on aim. There was some variance going mm. on there. The math was maybe a little bit different, I don't know. Well, you know it lives on. Yeah. So that admiration is there now. Absolutely. Regardless yeah. of sales. And figures. also the fact is that the code base was so small, how they could actually get it into that time. Yeah, it was incredible. bonkers. Yeah. Absolutely bonkers. Let's talk autographs. We have a number of things here <laughs> from Team 17 and from... You. So we have your Amiga 600. Hey, hi, buddy. Your happy book with all the drawings and sketches in it. Yep. And these various things, hard disks. Um, oh, well, hang on. Uh huh. The condoms didn't sell for some reason. Really? Oh, um, look at that digital domain. So we're going to get these autographed by you. Flashback. For the lucky people that bought them on eBay. Right. For the charity auction. That is wonderful. Yeah. So we actually raised a little over $1,000 for Kira Orphanage. That's in, really, in really Kenya. cool. That's very, very good. Yeah. I'm going to just round it up to the nearest hundred or whatever. Wonderful. I'll get that donated over to them. That's great. Our friend uh, Hayden Bixby, who runs uh, that orphanage, will be very pleased. Very good. Yeah. Uh, I talk to him quite often on my Samsung phone. Hayden Bixby. Hey, Bixby. Oh, hey, Bixby. It's a she, by the way. Oh. Cracking on, Dan White says, what inspired the series? I think he means worms. Were there any games or other material that were a heavy influence on development? Um, on that, it would be Scorched Earth. Scorched Earth was the, the game that actually provided the, the impetus to make worms. Okay. Scorched Earth was just the same, you angle it and then you fire, and that's okay. all it was, just same tanks. Yeah. Just tanks and doing that. But that was just one aspect of, t of, of worms, of course. Mm. All the other cool stuff Andy Davidson came up with, all the, all the hand grenade and the donkey, concrete donkey and all these things. Yeah. But all the stuff was in his mad brain, which was awesome. Great stuff. So David Cherryman is back again with another They're question. all interesting names. Right? The Cherryman. Uh, David says, was there anything that you could have got involved with that declined and now regret? Good question. Oh, man. That's a good one. Yeah. I didn't, we didn't decline anything. <laughs> I like architecture. I should have done that. Me too. I, like, I wanted to be an architect. That's what I want to be. Yeah, yeah. You know, you have to find creative outlet, especially mm. like if you wanted to be an architect. Mm. Or Then they say that if you don't channel that, you, you can lead to schizophrenia or 
No, you can go. You can go mad. My voice you tells me mad. that. My other voice tells me exactly the same thing as that. <laughs> the Actually, they're talking to me right now. The voice just fed no. me. No, I won't kill them all. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, maybe I should find some tartan underwear. <laughs> I'm gonna. That's your it. only defense. <laughs> all right, and now we have a question from Lady Fractic, and she says, "I've never met Lady Fractic. Is she real? She's in the other room. No, she's at work." Unfortunately, she has a proper job, a real job, unlike me. <laughs> I have, I don't have a proper job. Hi, Chris. Lady Fractic here. Just Lady Fractic. Like Madonna. Anyway, I was wondering if you could recommend anywhere to visit in Scotland. I would actually recommend uh, up the West Coast is amazing in the summertime. Summer. Summer was on a Thursday this year. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you've got to get your dimes right. And then, um, but... I would always recommend to go to uh, during the, the Edinburgh, during the, the Festival Fringe. Okay. It is electric there. It's just amazing. And I would go there and just stay there. Okay. And Edinburgh is a walking town city. You can walk everywhere. It's just absolutely fantastic. Ah, there, yeah. you La there you go. There you go. Lady Edinburgh. <laughs> One more question and we are done. And this mm. is from Paul Jacobson. Paul Jacobson? Definitely made Hey, Paul. <laughs> he says, what's your take on deep fakes? And do you think it has a place in movie or game SFX in the future? It already does, because the way the way that um, technology was just a few years ago was painstaking and a nightmare to do. Mm. Uh, and I think the uh, Princess Leo example is a really great example. Right. And yes, yeah, so I think the art, it's a dangerous world. It's very tricky yeah. and it's super exciting. And at the same time, we all know where it's going. It can go down that road, yeah. the bad road, which is, you know, you can immediately take someone's voice and copy it and make them say anything and visually copy them and make them say anything you want. Absolutely, does it have place and visual effects? It already does and it's already going to get more. There's going to be, I really see a time when people are going to say, and it's, they could, you could type it or you could just plug and play it, but it would be cool if it was voice driven. Mm -hmm. That you'd say, uh, give me uh, an empty slaughterhouse. Uh, yeah, put blood on the ground. Right, give me some gargoyles from Paris from the late 1600s. Yeah, put those, put them in the corners, right? Make their eyes light up, saying all that, and do set dressing yeah. and building, and it'll be in VR. And then on top of that, you'll have sets that instead of building those sets, they'll do front camera projection onto screens, mm -hmm. and which is what they're doing with Mandalorian, and, and they've done some great demos of that. And it's something that we came up, that we thought about years ago when we had camera projection, we could mm. project a texture, we realized, wonder if we could come up with screens and we could do all that stuff, but you add that and then you add all the deep fake stuff together. Yeah. It's not just about deep fake, it's about machine learning mm -hmm. and how that can be part of the creative process. But yeah, it can go down a dark road, but in terms of what, I don't know how you can control that. There's going to be other computers that can see deep fakes and tell you, so mm -hmm. you know it's deep fake. Yeah. You know, that's already happening too. You need anti deep fake, the anti deep fake police. Where does it end? With the anti deep fake police. Oh, looks like yeah, 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 literally. Yeah. I can tell you one thing for sure, nobody's ever going to change my voice. Or mine. <laughs> All right, well, it has been an absolute pleasure. It's great fun. With you, Chris. Yeah. Um, you, you've become a pretty good friend, Yeah. Uh, I would like to say. Yes, right? it's great fun. I feel um, honored to have met you and for you to have donated this stuff to us and obviously all the good stuff that That's it's wonderful. gone on to do. So but thank not you that for one. that. But not this one, Chris. <laughs> Chris has taken this one home with him yeah. because after he saw it on my video, he decided that he'd was rather in love with that. I was, it really was. I think when I, something that I've really enjoyed, mm -hmm. um, apart from meeting you and knowing you more, is that it actually has given me more of like, oh yeah, wait, this is fun. I remember all this. And so I remember when I, when I, when I dropped this off, when I was wanting to kind of give it to someone else to give it a new life, mm -hmm. this is what it's been done. This is what the best part is, is that yeah. giving it to you has given it the best thing. All the best things have happened. And I'm super pleased for that. Um, but when I saw, when this particular machine, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna, I think I need one machine. So you know what I ordered today? What? A new power supply for, for that machine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I bought you one already. Oh, you did? So we'll, we'll talk about it. All right. So yeah, I, it's it been is, an absolute pleasure. It is pretty sexy. Yeah, yeah, it really is. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Great Always stuff. a pleasure. Yeah. And uh, I'll be back next time with more delicious retro recipes. So thanks for watching. Subscribe below and cheerio. Cheerio.
Rider. My name's Flunk McClure. You might remember me from venereal disease. 